We have been discussing the point of waswasa, bad thoughts that come into a person's mind, and that is put in there by the shaitan, and that is waswasa, and good thoughts also come into the mind of a person which is regarded as ilham, which comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via the angels in the person's mind. And you would not be responsible for any of these actions, uh, any of these thoughts, unless and until you do not put it into action. And Ibn Mas'udin, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, ma minkum min ahadin illa wa qad wukkila bihi qarinuhu min al jinni wa qarinuhu min al malaikati, qalu wa iyaka ya Rasulullah, قال وإياي ولكن الله أعاني عانني عليه فأسلم فلا يأمرني إلا بخير رواه مسلم. This hadith narrated by Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه and he says that the beloved Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم had stated that none of you that is there but he is associated with a shaitan and he is also associated with a malaika. The Sahaba asked, Ya Rasulullah, if every servant of Allah has a shaitan with him and has a malaika to guide him, and about you, Ya Rasulullah, the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, Wa iyaya. Yes, I also have a shaitan with me. Walakinna Allaha a'anani alayhi. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala assisted me with this shaitan that is with me. Fa'aslama. Unlike the shaitan that you have with you, my shaitan has brought iman. It is a Muslim. فَلَا يَأْمُرُنِي إِلَّا بِخَيْرٍ It does not give me any instructions, does not put any bad thoughts in my mind, but good thoughts. So every person has a shaitan associated with him. And the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated that every man as he is created, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a jinn together with him. In other words, a shaitan with him. And this is with that person from the time of birth. As we will go further and we will learn from the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what happens to a person when he comes into this dunya. وَأَنْ أَنَسٍ قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَجْرِ مِنَ الْإِنسَانِ مَجْرَ الدَّمْ Reported by Sayyidina Anas bin Malik رضي الله تعالى عنه that the shaitan is associated with every person like how the blood is associated with every individual. In other words, in every drop of your blood the shaitan is there. So we have a very, very serious problem. The problem of waswasa, the problem of our greatest enemy, which is the shaitan, and we need to combat the shaitan at every given time. You know, it is said that you can only cure yourself when the doctors identify what the problem is. For that matter, it could be a car. It could be any electronic instrument. As long as a person does not identify what the problem is, he cannot rectify that problem. Alhamdulillah, we are very, very fortunate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beloved. Our Nabi Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallama had given us this message in advance 
and said that these are some of your problems that you will encounter and the biggest enemy that you have is the shaitan within yourself so every person has a shaitan and how fortunate we are as believers that our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had in advance told us what the problems we are going to encounter if you find yourself a person that's not reading namaz if you find yourself a person that is not giving out charity if you find yourself finding it very difficult to fast in month of Ramadan every time when the month of Ramadan comes automatically the mind tells you you know it's going to be very very hot and I'm suffering from pressure you know my sugar levels are going to go very high it might get very low now this kind of talk is actually thoughts that we put into the mind by the shaitan to tell you have a break money that you work so hard for you're going to give it out as charity then what's going to happen to the bank balance the bank balance is going to be affected we might not see that much profit at the end of the month these are thoughts dear brothers that is put in by the shaitan and Nabi Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had advised us in advance that you are going to encounter such an opposition within your mind within your heart and now that we have identified this is the problem then dear brothers we need to keep far away from the shaitan and try to follow the good thoughts that come in our mind that is put in there by the malaika when you find a person that is very very regular onto his musalla always being charitable whenever he speaks he speaks the word of Allah the word of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. you cannot find any fault in that person then remember such a person is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the person has taken the guidance of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam by combating the shaitan Sayyidina Ali al-Murtaza radiallahu ta'ala anhu had stated that there isn't a person that would read namaz or go about his daily chores without being affected by the shaitan and Sayyidina Ali al-Murtaza radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that if you read namaz and if bad thoughts didn't come into your mind or if you read namaz and your thoughts were taken away from namaz you went into the football arena your mind went into a certain movie your mind went towards the family or whatever the case may be then remember this is normal that every person's mind goes away because the shaitan is there to distract the shaitan is there to distract you but immediately try to combat that and concentrate and remind yourself that I am in the presence of Allah when we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen we must say translate this in our mind that all praise is due to Allah and say and address Allah try to combat the shaitan and say that you're not going to take me away from my namaz because remember for a person to leave his daily chores to leave his work to make wudu come into the masjid this is the first step of defeat for the shaitan but the shaitan does not stop he then follows you onto the musalla he says okay I was not able to stop you from that game you were watching you were successful in switching the TV off you made wudu you came to the masjid I failed to distract you 
But now that you are on the musalla and making ibadat, let me take your mind away. I was not able to take your body away, but now let me take your mind away. That is waswasa. And Sayyidina Ali al-Murtaza radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that it is a believer that would be distracted. And if a person reads namaz without any distraction, then such a namaz is like the namaz or such a ibadat is like the ibadat of a Jew or of a Nasara. Because if a person wants to steal, where would he go? Sorry to use this word, is he going to go into the jundals? What is he going to get there? He's not going to get gold and jewelry in there. He's not going to get thousands and thousands of rand there. Because you don't expect them to carry that kind of jewelry or that kind of money. Yes, when he sees a beautiful mansion, two-story, three-story mansion, that is worth about 10, 15 million rand, and the cars that are parked around that mansion are all cars, nothing less than half a million rand. That rogue would say, you know what, this is the place that I should go and steal. Because it seems like there is something valuable in there. That is the same example of a believer. When the shaitan looks at a believer, and when he looks at a non-believer, he says, you know what, the non-believer is my murid. He is my disciple. He is my follower. I don't have to worry about him. He is already misguided. He taps him in the back and he says, carry on. Do what you were doing. But the believer is the one that defies the shaitan. And I hope all you out there, the viewers, when I say you are the one that defy the shaitan, defy the shaitan in every action of yours. Because the shaitan, he does not leave our side. He's within ourselves. We've just been through a hadith where Nabi Pak sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, narrated by Anas bin Malik, that inna shaitana yajri min al insani majraddam that the shaitan, it is within the human body, like how the blood flows within your body. So you can't get rid of him. He's there at all time. He's there to misguide you practically or in your mind. So therefore, dear brothers, we must be grateful to our beloved Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who in advance had warned us that this is your greatest enemy. You know, you find an enemy that comes into a battlefield. You know, the person has got a gun, the person has got a rifle. You know what steps to take, how to defend yourself. But when the enemy is within you, that becomes very, very difficult to defend that person. But Alhamdulillah, our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had guided us, had given us hidayat, told us in advance that these are some of the distractions that you will face in your day-to-day -day practices, whether it means salah, whether it means giving zakat, whether it means going for hajj. I mean, how do you feel, I mean, how do you expect a person to you know, fork out these days, 70, 80,000 rand and go for Hajj. It's not a small amount of money. But the person spends that money. Alhamdulillah, we say shukar alhamdulillah. He does that because he knows he has to do it. It's one of the faraid of Islam. And if that person is overcome by the waswas of the shaitan, then respected brothers, he could have hundreds of millions of rand. He would not go for Hajj because he's being now misguided by the shaitan. Jazakallah khair wa ma'alina illa al-balaghul mubeen.